I'm not gonna lie. Life is often everything at once. I shared a story on my Instagram last week of me venting and complaining about literally this. The overwhelm. The intensity. The when it rains it pours reality. I think my exact words were as follows. Honestly, life has been very, very difficult lately. So, so much has been happening all at once. And not the good things, you know? And I can't help but ask myself when I'll be able to catch a break. The venting session continued for three more slides. Anyway, I cannot tell you how many messages I got in my DMs of people telling me that they feel the exact same way. Their lives have been noisy and painful too. It is raining and pouring in their lives too. They are struggling with overwhelm too. Point is that we are all in the same boat, I guess, which means that we need to talk about this, like we need to talk about this. And hopefully with a little bit of grace and practicality just so that we can actually make it out of this with as few bruises and scratches as possible. That is the goal. So there's a popular prayer we pray as Christians called the Lord's Prayer. And within it is a cry that I believe can benefit everyone, even those of us who aren't Christian or religious at all. So with that being said, let's get cozy and comfortable And let's begin today's very honest conversation. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Being Allowed podcast. As always, I am your host, Bibi Shea, and... Um, we talk here about everything that has to do with what it means to be human, even the stickiest of subjects. In fact, I believe that the stickiest of subjects are the ones that deserve our attention the most because I don't know why, for some reason, we live in a society and in a day and age where so many things are taboo, like too many things are taboo, I think. And what that ends up doing is that it leaves any of us who experience any degree of real life feeling extremely lonely, feeling like our backs are to the wall, um, feeling like we don't have anyone to talk to. It's just so sad. It's so sad. And so I have decided that this podcast will be my attempt to contribute to the world with a degree of uh, honesty and realness that I believe I can contribute Um, because I've reached a certain age and certain like level in my life where what people think of me doesn't matter to me as much as it used to, I guess. And so being honest and being transparent and kind of like dumping um, the reality of my life comes a little more naturally because so many barriers have been broken. You know, when you've been through too much that now like whatever people wanted to say about me has already been said. So if they say anything right now, like I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not going to be like taken aback. It's not going to hurt my feelings, you know? Uh, I mean, of course, people can still hurt my feelings and they do all the time, but not in the way that it, that they used to, at least. And so this uh, podcast is very dear to my heart. And all that to say that today's episode specifically makes me feel very grateful that... Uh, like almost two years ago, I started this podcast because it's during seasons like this season that I'm in right now that I feel like, wow, wow, I'm so glad I have this place. I'm so glad I have this space. I'm so glad that the people who listen to this podcast are the people who listen to this podcast because you are all so sweet and real and genuine. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can see, I think you can see, just how gloomy the weather is outside and dusty and windy and how fitting right like how divine is this you know uh the weather is terrible today 
um, which kind of fits the, the which kind of fits the theme of uh, what we're going to be talking about today, which is just I get the feeling that it's not just me, and I know it's not just a feeling because of what I said in the introduction that I did post this on Instagram a couple of days ago. Um, just a venting session on Instagram where I just shared about how intense life has been. Um, how insane, how just everything all at once it feels. And then the amounts of DMs that I got of people saying, oh my gosh, it's us too. Me too. Oh my gosh, I really needed this. And it's as though to say like, wow, I, I believe sometimes the world works in very weird, mysterious ways where there's like a wave that kind of washes over lots of people where lots of people feel the same thing at once. And I think that's such a cool reality of being a person within a community and within a society. And then it's also another really cool thing of like sharing what you're going through. Um, because if I hadn't shared, I wouldn't have known that I'm not alone. But then I shared and now I know that I'm not alone, which kind of encouraged me even more to create this episode specifically right now, even though it was on my list anyway for ages. But yeah, life is interesting these days in the sense that I feel like lots of us are going through a very strong season of overwhelm where lots and lots of things are going on maybe at the same time and where maybe not everything that's going on is good. Um, lots of the things that we're going through are actually pretty terrible and pretty hard um, and we're having to navigate those things all of a sudden like like we're pros and the thing is um, I thought I was a pro you know if you've known me e either online or in person for any amount of time you know the extent of things that I've been through the last few years and yet every new thing that happens in my life takes me by surprise as though I have had zero training in this school of life in which we are all in. Um, sorry, my I, I tend to forget English sometimes. Um, but yeah, right now is one of those times where um, I thought I was going to catch a break. Like I thought life was finally clearing and the, the waves were finally kind of clearing and things were kind of you know, starting to work out and fall into place and stuff. And then out of nowhere, I got hit and bombarded by this ginormous tsunami of like life looking at me and being like, haha, you thought this was over, but it's not over. Okay. There's still a lot more where this came from. And I'm like, no, I can't. And then it's not like life is like, okay, let's give her one thing. Okay. Let's give her one hard thing to navigate, you know? No, life is like, no, no, let me give her lots and lots of things so that as I think before I go to sleep at night, being the overthinker and anxious human being that I am, I'm like, okay, I actually cannot breathe because the number of thoughts in my brain right now are so freaking loud and they're all at once that like I can't quiet one thought long enough to hear just another thought long enough for me to kind of like follow through that train of thought you know what I mean you know but then something super cool happened is that on Instagram I was like okay guys I'm going through this thing I feel like life is very overwhelming it's too many things at once la 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 um and so I feel like uh it would suck for someone else to go through what I'm going through right now and therefore let me tell you my Instagram followers that I will pray for you guys tonight. And I did. I closed Instagram and I prayed for my followers, uh, for whoever's going through whatever thing. And then I finished praying and then I got notifications. I opened them. Uh, there's people sharing things that they're going through with me. Um, but then the thing I found really interesting was that people were saying, thank you for praying. Yes, please pray for me. Yes, please pray, pray for me. Um, and I know that not all the people who reached out to me are people who believe necessarily in, in God or in prayer. And I know that not everybody who reached out to me is someone who uh, is a Christian. And so, but they know that I'm a Christian. And so it's like, 
interesting and I found it so wonderful and so warm and so beautiful and so uniting that I was able to pray for specific people by name as they were DMing me. And as though like every person I responded to, I was able to pause and lift them in prayer. Um, and it's as though like the more I thought about it, the more I realized, wow, there does come a certain point in a man's life or a woman's life where we are so at the end of ourselves that our only option, our only choice is to lean on a much higher power. And you can call that higher power whatever you want to call that higher power. Uh, but there comes a certain point where we realize, if we're very honest with ourselves, we realize that we need to rely. We need to, in that moment, believe. We have to believe that there is something bigger, someone bigger, who we can lean on, we can cry out to, we can throw ourselves on full weight um, and hope and pray and cross our fingers that that higher power is listening and that that higher power cares. Now, I'm not secretive at all about my faith, so everybody who knows me at all knows I'm a Christian. I actually believe it. I actually love it. I practice it, you know, from the bottom of my heart, my Christian faith. Um, but today's episode isn't about religion at all. It's not about any one particular faith. It's just about one specific prayer that we pray as Christians that I believe can apply to all of us. It can be a philosophy, not so much a, a prayer. You can pray it too. Uh, I pray it personally all the time. But you can even take it just as a philosophy and apply it in your life. And that is, we have a... Um, a very, the most famous prayer in the Christian faith is the Lord's Prayer. And, um, you know, even if you're not a Christian, you probably have heard people say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, the, be thy name. Um, in Arabic, it's Amen al Samoyet, you know. Um, that's how it starts. But then there's a part in it that says, Give us this day our daily bread. And it feels as though this keeps, you know, ringing in my head every time I go through something that is like like insane on like a human level and I really come to, to the end of myself at least the last few times that I reached this level of like absolute overwhelm and despair and insanity and lola this kept coming to my mind which is this like give us this day our daily bread give us this day our daily bread and I've been praying it. I've been trying to pray it. To be very honest, it's a difficult prayer to pray. But let's talk about the philosophy of it, of reaching out for just what we need for today to survive. Because I feel like um, as human beings, maybe this is like the human pride that exists within all of us or whatever, but um, we we kind of like, we feel like the only time we'll actually feel secure or safe or confident in the way that we're going is if we receive some kind of grand assurance of the way every single thing is going to work out in a big picture form, right? I want to know the end result. I want to know how this this giant problem that I'm facing today is going to work out. I want to know... Uh, you know, what this medical treatment, if it's going to work or not. And this could take like months for someone who's like been diagnosed with something. Um, I know because I'm walking through this with a with a family member right now is like, we want to know, like we want to reach the end. And then all this uncertainty and all this like wrestling to know something that is in the future only gives birth and makes space for anxiety. And it takes a lot of humility for us to be like, actually, I don't think as a human being, I was made with the capacity to receive information about how every single thing in my life is going to work out in the big picture in the future. I think that was made with a very specific design um, that we human beings are finite and that our capacities for to receive um, information and to walk this life are very limited. In fact, they are as limited as every single day for itself. That's how limited we are. 
we cannot handle more than what one day offers us, which sucks because as human beings, we feel like we are the most advanced mammals in the world. We have brains, we have minds, we have willpowers, we have the ability to reflect and respond to the world around us and have like free spirit, free will and be free spirits and all that stuff. And that kind of eventually becomes very like egocentric and very prideful, a prideful way of, for us to think whenever it comes to real life things. Sure, we can plan, we can you know, have dreams and goals and ambitions. But let's not deceive ourselves in thinking that we have it in us to handle more than one day at a time. Which leads us to the very next logical step, which is if I can't handle more than one day at a time, then what is the point in stressing out, worrying, being so anxious, like digging ourselves in graves of like tossing and turning and being anxious about things we don't know and things we things we frankly cannot control. I'm learning this lesson now more than ever in my entire life. Like I'm really coming at you with a life lesson that I'm trying to figure out the practicality of right now. I'm not there yet, but it's it's something I'm consciously consciously trying to implement into my days is this idea of taking every thought captive and releasing one thing at a time. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so we, we now have established that we are human beings. We only have the capacity for daily bread, which means on a daily basis, we need to replenish our source of food, our source of nutrition, our source of energy on a daily basis. That can look different for every different person. For me, that looks like daily reading my Bible, um, meditating, praying, kind of submitting to the fact that I'm so small and that there is a much bigger entity in charge. For you, it can be whatever. Um, but what practices do you need to incorporate in your daily life that could be your daily bread? Where do you get your source of strength? your source of renewal. Um, maybe journal every day so that you can kind of clear your mind and respond to the world around you and kind of like demystify the intensity because when life gets overwhelming, you can hear noise in your brain. Um, and sometimes things like journaling will help us kind of string each problem on its own so that we can tackle one thing at a time. Just they, they're have, they're, we need to incorporate daily rituals and practices and habits that are a source of replenishing, a source of bread, a source of life into our days. But now that we've done that, how can we practically let go of our need for control? We, we think we can control. That's, that's like the deception of anxiety is that it makes us think that we can control. It makes us think that the more time we spend tossing and turning and and being anxious and losing sleep and all that stuff, the more that will arrive at something. But you know what? When we're anxious, when we lose sleep, that doesn't make tomorrow come any quicker. That doesn't make the answer make itself available to us any sooner. It doesn't make... Um, you know, like medical, uh, I don't know, like processes show their results any quicker. You know what the only thing that does is, is it makes us, it robs us of sleep. It robs us of peace. It robs us of the present moment. And so I shared this before in a previous uh, podcast, this exercise of control, where if you feel like you're overwhelmed, if you feel like there's too many things going on at the same time, that you would write down a list of the things that you can control. The th no, no. That you would write down a list of every single thing that is stressing you out right now. Every single thing that is overwhelming you right now. And then cross out all the ones that you have no control over. I'm super worried about the financial situation where we're going to be like in a year. Will I be able to put my, my kids in the same school next year, for example? You can't control that. You can't control the one in, in a year part. So cross that out 
and then instead think, what can I control? I can work hard today. I can show up the best I can today. I can be super faithful in my work today. That is what I can control. I have found this to be super helpful. But then again, that only works while we're doing the exercise, right? It'll give us so much relief, honestly. But then in between exercises, in between mindfulness exercises or meditative exercises, we're still tossing and turning and we're still being super anxious and we're still freaking out about things that we can't control, right? So how do we do that? I am practicing and I am seeing progress, which is why I'm telling you about this, because I know it's doable, is this idea of taking every thought captive. Notice, get to know yourself, right? So notice when anxiety really, really, really is is amped up, when the volume is on maximum for anxiety in your head. You'll feel it in your body, like, do you feel it in your chest? Do your jaws clench up? Do you feel shortness of breath? Uh, Does your heart start racing? Like, when do you feel like you're super overwhelmed? And in that moment, start training your brain to associate this physical feeling with a call to pause. I promise you this is doable. I promise you I'm doing it in my own life. This isn't like some, you know, ideal practice that we can ideally do. No, I I promise you this works. I am starting to train my brain to notice when my body is super clenched up and and when my mind is spiraling in anxiety. And as soon as I notice these cues, these physical cues, I'm training my brain to like now pay attention. What was my train of thought that made my body feel this way? That gave me this degree of anxiety. Okay, now that I know I have been really overwhelmed. I have been super anxious because my brain has taken me to places that are in the future in regards to things that haven't happened yet, might never happen yet, and things that I don't know and cannot control. My brain is there. And so I'm spiraling and I have this anxiety. And I don't want to feel this way anymore. And so in that moment, I will remind myself, you are in the present moment. Here's what you know right now. And sometimes I will literally say it out loud, like before bed when I'm alone in the dark in my bed. Um, I will tell myself, Booba, you're freaking out about this. Here's what you do know. Here's what today looks like. Here's what this present moment, here are the facts of the right now. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And that will kind of bring me back to the present moment to where I'm like, okay, I'm not in this future that is scaring me. I'm not in this like crazy thing that is scaring me. I am in the right now and here's what I know right now. And by the way, the right now isn't always lovely and bubbly. You know what I mean? Like my right now kind of (laughs) sucks, but I'm in it. So I know it. And I kind of want to leave you with a very last note. Um, I might have shared this before. I don't know. But years ago, my therapist told me something um, that has stuck with me and has resounded um, kind of like Uh, Lots of the things that she tells me, they tend to stick. Um, But this one particular thing, I had friends who were kind of passing through a very, very difficult time. This was years ago. And I was freaking out because I was like, I cannot imagine the amount of pain that they're in. And it's making me struggle because I feel so helpless. And I hate that they are going through this amount of pain. And she was like, Booba, you need to know something. Here, let, let this fact sink in that there is grace for every person in the midst of what they're going through. And so your friends are currently going through this experience. They are experiencing pain and grief. But guess what they have that you don't have? They have the grace that is assigned for this situation. And because you're not in this situation, you're just being overly empathetic. You are experiencing the pain and suffering without the grace. And I feel like I've been applying this to lots of things. So in like if we're if you are anxious about, you know, the worst case scenario unfolding in your life of this terrible thing that you really don't want to happen, guess what? It when you stress out about it right now, when you lose sleep, lose waking hours, lose precious here and now moments, freaking out about this thing that hasn't happened yet, You are freaking out about it 
imagining it because that's our brain's way like anxiety is basically our brain's way of being like here let me prepare you for this thing that hasn't happened just in case it does happen so that you know you know because our brains don't like to be shocked or surprised but when we let ourselves go to this anxiety we experience the pain without the grace that comes with it but when we redirect our thinking when we train our brains to take every thought captive and then filter one thought at a time in a similar way to what I just described or in whatever way can work for you, then if and when stuff hits the fan and the worst case scenario does happen, we will be in it and we will have enough grace for it. The kind of grace that we can only experience in that moment. So yeah, much like every other podcast episode, this episode has been a pep talk to me, to myself because I'm really in the thick and heart of, of needing to hear this myself. Um, I'm also in the thick and heart of practicing it for real myself. Um, and so this, uh, this is all I have. You know, we live and we learn as we live. We live and we learn as we live. Yeah. This episode um, is is like a a brotherhood, sisterhood, communityhood kind of um, contribution to something that I feel like lots of us are experiencing. And so if you are one of the people who responded to me in my DMs saying that you too are experiencing a season of overwhelm and that you need prayers, this episode was for you. And if you are someone who was on my Instagram and saw my stories but didn't respond but are are feeling the same thing or are experiencing the same thing, then this episode is for you. And if you didn't even see the Instagram and you're not even on my Instagram but you're feeling any degree of this, even if you're not experiencing everything all at once, maybe you're just experiencing one thing that really sucks, one burden that's extremely heavy that you are like learning how to navigate, then this is for you because you're not alone and we need to normalize talking about the difficulties of what it means to be a person, what it means to be human because it's hard. And so yeah, This is a pep talk to myself and an encouraging pep talk to you, hopefully. Thank you guys so, so much for being here again, for listening to this episode or watching this episode on YouTube. Um, I have been having amazing conversations, really, really enjoying them, honestly. And, um, And so if you liked today's episode and if you're in support of the Being Allowed podcast, please don't forget to subscribe specifically to YouTube because I'm really trying really, really hard with the whole YouTube thing. Um, But also the reason why I'm trying hard with the YouTube thing is because the conversations are endless. Like the possibilities of the amount of conversations we can have in the comment section are endless. So subscribe, like, hit the notification bell and also leave your comments and suggestions maybe for things you'd like to see. And uh, if you'd like to see more lighthearted, like everyday behind the scenes kind of things, I have been, I've started, you know, um, doing vlogs. They are out every week. Last week, I uh, just released a vlog of the reality of what it means to be Egyptian living in this country on a difficult uh, day of Egyptian errands. So... If you're interested in, uh, in seeing a chaotic day that really went terribly, then you can click on this video. It will appear somewhere here on the screen. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see you again next time. Thank you so much for being here.